always tell David, whenever I see he's the song leader and I'm preaching, I said, the dream team rides again. <laughs> We've done a lot of services together through the years, and uh, it's always so much fun. <clears throat> when I was a kid and uh, I started preaching, uh, people would come up to me and they would say, man, you sure preached a long time, and I always took that as a compliment. <laughs> they didn't realize they were encouraging me in the wrong direction. <laughs> I will tell you that I do work very hard to chop these things down, <clears throat> and uh, each time I get this opportunity to uh, just articulate uh, some of these things, uh, there's, you just know there's a lot of this you're not going to get. <laughs> uh, when, when Larry and I were uh, working on messages in the old days, he would say, well, Brent, you got to look at this verse and this verse and this verse, and don't forget this, and he, he really taught me to look at the whole issue, <clears throat> you know, and uh, one of the challenges in then preaching that <laughs> is how to somehow fit that in. And uh, tonight, no exception, but we are going to work quickly. Um, the LTC, there's going to be a lot of announcements about that over the next little while in the bulletin. I sent Jana a whole bunch of stuff, so just do your best with that. <laughs> there's, uh, I used to, I used to, I used to think of the, the parents when I was teaching instrumental music, and we would send home like 20 pages of information, and then another 20 pages, and I would be like, how are they going to read all this? I can't. I don't even know how I wrote it all. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow we managed to communicate all of that. But uh, with LTC, as we get closer now, just understand there's going to be information and there's going to be things coming together and there's going to be a lot happening because this is an Im immense effort and uh, with immense rewards and uh, immense opportunities. And uh, we just want to continue to focus on that because it has uh, so many wonderful things coming together. Um, Again, Toby, yeah, was here yesterday morning. I learned things about Toby I didn't know, and I've known Toby for a while, and I've got to work with members of his family for a while, but still, when he stood up in front and he started to articulate and started to share things about his life, I had no idea. <laughs> and probably some of you sitting here knew a lot of what he said, but it was news to me, and it was it's just inspiring to hear some of that story I'd never heard before. Because I got here late to the game, right? I got here in 2006. And uh, I missed a lot of things, but it was wonderful hearing him uh, express those those wonderful things. And then fun day today! Wow, what an opportunity! I had Braden. He walked up to that first bowl, and uh, he was a pitcher, right, in the old days. And so he just takes that bowling ball back, and boom, there was a strike, strike one. <laughs> <laughs> and I kept watching more strikes follow, and I'm like, what on earth is going on here? He has transferred the diamond to the alley. <laughs> and many of the other kids, I, was, I think I was looking over at the, the younger girls' alley, and they were at times not even using the, the bumper things. And they were hitting pins. And I was like, this is incredible. <clears throat> you know? And uh, <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was really cool because I remember when I first started bowling with youth groups, I couldn't hit the pins. I just kept hitting the gutter. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> the, these things that we're doing, I'll share this, this one last thought. These things that we're doing with the kids are life skills. I never dreamed that when I took a ski trip uh, with a church youth group when I was in like the seventh grade that I would be pulling kids off a mountain when I was a teacher and taking tire marching bands on a ski trip. <laughs> I never dreamed that all those things I learned in church that had all kinds of maybe nothing to do with what we sometimes focus on, uh, I would be using as part of my living and, and all the different opportunities. And I just want to thank Emporia Avenue once again for everything they've done for my family and uh, many others. And uh, it's just a tremendous experience and opportunity to be part of everything that we do here as we move forward and look at all the things that are coming together in the days to come. All right, is my message up there? Oh, good. <laughs> we were, uh, I got to share one brief thought from our LTC conversations with you guys tonight. Uh, on Wednesday nights, this, this particular chapter came up. You'll be, we'll be in Matthew 22 in a second if you want to look at that and start turning there. Uh, and we were looking at this parable and and the, the, the book of Matthew and I, I tell the kids this when we start the book of Matthew and this is the second time I've had the opportunity to do an LTC on Matthew which I consider a great gift <clears throat> because it was the gospel when I was a kid that I studied the most and I just kept reading it and I just kept reading it and I, in many years I look back and I said well why? Well it was because it was the first one. <laughs> when you start reading the New Testament you start at the beginning and it's Matthew and wow what a, what a wonderful thing that is uh, to begin and I, and I but then I couldn't not read it. I, for some reason, I never wanted to read the book of Mark. I just kept going back to the beginning of Matthew. <laughs> My brain works really weird. I'm sorry about that. <clears throat> but I just kept studying the book of Matthew over and over and over. And to then have the opportunity to share this with the kids twice now uh, is it's a profound thing, you know, to go over this information and to focus on so many of the 
un unimaginable things that Jesus is sharing with them and to help these young people try to begin to recognize this just amazing information that is here. The first thing I said when we got to Matthew 22, <clears throat> as I said, I said, go ahead and get you on the slide here that gets us going here. Uh, there we go. I said, from the beginning of the Bible to the end, marriage is at the heart of most of what is going on there. I could sit down right now. <laughs> that thought is astounding. When we think about our world around us and what passes for this concept, we see a world and we look through history and we look through and we just look at this issue over and over and we just look at where we are today and we look at where we were 20 years ago. And we, some of us can look where we were 60 years ago. <clears throat> some of us can look back a long ways and we can think about what this dramatic issue is. In the ministry of Jesus, the Pharisees over and over and over would challenge him with this issue. To try to trap him, to try to, to, try to confuse him, to try to uh, wield a sense of superiority <clears throat> in certain ways. And Jesus again and again, when confronted with this issue, continued to articulate some of the most remarkable fundamentals and I, I do hope you, you see that tonight. <clears throat> the, some of the most remarkable fundamentals of this issue, which has everything to do with who we are and why we are here. <clears throat> if you really think about this, you know, when we look at Genesis 2.18, the Lord said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Why do people get married today? So many times it's the money. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times <clears throat> I, I, I look at the marriages of today and I look at uh, what's driving the decisions of that and it's money, 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 money. They're not interested in someone to help them. <clears throat> They're not interested in someone who's going to work with them. They're not interested in someone who's going to partner with them. They're not interested in someone who's going to compliment them. They're not even really interested in someone who's going to be one with them. <clears throat> They're having very, very different perspectives. And what's astounding here in this text, in the fundamental shaping of this whole idea that we know as marriage, is this idea that these two are going to come together to help one another. <laughs> no wonder we have so many problems in our society. <clears throat> when we have the fundamental element of who we are so distorted and so twisted and so out of focus that when we are recognizing what this was supposed to be about and what God had in mind with this whole process to begin with, to help us, <clears throat> we begin to see what is at stake in our lives ultimately with this whole situation. <clears throat> because the, the original intent of God was to create a team. If you think about it, <clears throat> the original intent of God was to create two individuals that would be able to come together and partner together and grow together and become something tremendously special. And in the, in the Old Testament, the word patriarch, <clears throat> you know, we, we think of this idea of patriarch. Well, how important were those individuals? Gigantic. <laughs> the immensity of who they are and their legacy and all that this is <clears throat> really represents the importance of our lives as well. <clears throat> the importance and the impact of what our families ought to mean. <clears throat> I ran across a profound statement. Uh, I don't even know who said it, but the, the statement went like this. All of all money and all economy and all business and all everything is all directed at the purpose of building the family. Think about that. Think about that. Why, why do we start Walmart? For the Walton family. <laughs> why, why do we start all these other businesses? Chick-fil-A. For their family. Why, why, why do they start all these other entities and all these other things? For their families. For the support of those things. <clears throat> and we think about what our families mean and represent and how important that they are. And we begin to see this issue more clearly, I hope. <clears throat> because the point of what God is trying to create here with this whole concept is something of tremendous benefit. It says in verse 24, that same chapter, this is why a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will. The two will become one flesh. Jesus would later say what God has joined together, let man not put asunder. A joining together. 
<clears throat> join together. Dan Rouse used to talk about how when, you, when that comes apart, <clears throat> when that comes apart, they can't help but be tremendous, he would use the word pain, <laughs> but tremendous consequence to this process because what God has brought together, he has joined together, and when he unites that, the separation of that cannot come without tremendous consequence. <clears throat> and that's exactly what we see in our lives over and over and over all day long. <clears throat> I love this next Push the right button. Good. What about the end of scriptures? Remember, I said from the beginning to the end. We won't have to talk. We won't have time to talk about everything in between. I promise. <laughs> but what what does the end of the scriptures say in Revelation 19:9? And this is just one very small piece of this remarkable text <clears throat> that goes into chapter 20 and into chapter 21. But he says here in verse 9 of chapter 19, Then the angel said to me, Write this: Blessed are those who were invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. We're about to see uh, a portrayal of the entire concept of this <clears throat> when we look at Matthew 22. And what the revelation is showing us here is that this is indeed going to happen. <laughs> many, many people say in our world today, well, there will never be a great reunion between God and his people. God will never return and there isn't even a God. They are a little confused. <clears throat> They're going to be very, very, very surprised. <laughs> when the reality of these things is presented before them. I was seeing a, a, one individual comment on this yesterday. He said, 25 years, 50 years, 75 years from now, you're going to be there. It doesn't matter. It, at some point here in the very immediate future, <laughs> you are going to be seeing these things. <clears throat> you're going to be presented with these things. And then when we get to the text here, <clears throat> Matthew 22, Jesus is going to begin to tell this parable. Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. And he sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. I don't know about you, but if I was someone and hearing this story for the very first time, this would shock me to the core of who I am. <laughs> this is an astounding moment in our lives. <clears throat> this is a moment that is so profound and such a great celebration. It's one of these things, how can we miss it? <clears throat> and in the particular case of this parable, these are the, the closest friends of this king. These are his closest associates. You don't just divide anybody to these things. <laughs> these are the most important people of the kingdom. These are the most important people. And they're all invited. <clears throat> and they're all invited, and they all refuse to come. This, uh, as Jesus is telling this story at this point, is start to really get our attention. <clears throat> and, when he, and, when he, and then he goes to verse 4, and he says, then he sent some more servants and said, Tell those who have been invited that I have prepared the dinner. My oxen and fatted cow have been butchered and everything is ready. Come to the banquet. <clears throat> In other words, the, the, the entirety of everything that you would expect has been completed. Everything that needed to be done was accomplished. In verse 5, they paid no attention and they went off, one to his field, another to his business. And Jesus says in this particular case in verse 6, the rest seized the servants, mistreated them, and even killed them. And then the king was enraged, and he sent his army and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. What started out as just an invitation <clears throat> turns into a dramatic series of events that shake the core of what I would call this entire kingdom. <clears throat> you know, we live in a world today that uh, Jesus is mirroring what the scope of this world is in the process of finishing. <clears throat> the invitation has been sent out, and we live in a world today, and it's continuing to be sent out. This is so important to recognize. We, we live in a world today where the message and the invitation to become a part of God's family is going out. And one day that opportunity will no longer exist. One day the time for that invitation will come to a close. And the moments of reconciliation to God will, will be ended. And the then response of God to all the things that then did not respond in kind to the nature of these situations will be addressed. <clears throat> I think this is very, very, very important. When someone important invites you to do something, what do you say? I'm so busy. <laughs> no, no. 
You know, we say, oh, I'll clear my schedule, I'll clear my calendar, I'll clear this, I'll clear that, I will make room, I will wiggle this. We start to move things around in our lives. <clears throat> God is saying, that is who I am. God is saying, I am an individual and what I am doing is of such a nature that it does indeed affect our lives. And it is worthy of us affecting change in our lives. It is worthy of us changing our schedule in our lives. It is worthy of us affecting our priorities in our life. And it is worthy of the many aspects of what this, <clears throat> what this represents. We, we live in a world today that can find all kinds of reasons <laughs> to distract themselves from this thing, just like the people earlier on in the parable who said they're too busy. They got things to do. They got places to go. They got people to see. Too busy to see God, really? <clears throat> when we really put this on a plus and a minus category, which I like to do a lot, <laughs> when we really look at this and we say, okay, I got to see this person, but I'm too busy for God. What, what are we really saying? What are we really showing about our own understanding of the nature of all things? And I do mean all things. <laughs> when we're looking at the nature of why this universe is here, why this world is here, and why uh, the temperature was what it was today, and why we have so many seconds in the day, and why we have so many weeks in the, in the year, and why this is all laid out the way it is, it wasn't because anybody decided that. <laughs> It was because God determined it. It was because God established it. And what he's saying here is, I am planning something very special. And I want you to be a part of it. <clears throat> it's basically what he's saying. And our response needs to be, okay, let's clear the schedule. <laughs> let's get ready. <clears throat> I love the final invitation here, verse 8. And I really thought carefully about how to phrase these things <laughs> because God even gives a final invitation here. You know, there was, there was the first invitation and then, and then there was a like kind of a response to that. And then here in verse 8, he gives a final invitation. He said to his servants, the wedding banquet is ready and those I invited didn't deserve to come, even though I invited them, even though they should have been <laughs> worthy. <clears throat> so go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out to the streets and gathered all the people they could find, the bad and the good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. The final invitation. <clears throat> we live in that very, very time. This is remarkable to me. Jesus was telling this parable in the beginning of this final age, in the beginning in the, of these final days, in the beginning of this time. And here as we arrive at this moment, whatever this day is today, <laughs> 2023, you know, we arrive at this moment in this process, and ultimately this final invitation is being still extended for whatever time. And what Jesus is saying here is it's been extended to everyone. Go out to the street and invite anyone and see if they come. And the hall was filled. Verse 11, and this is what we really need to just Consider for just a moment tonight as we wrap up a final couple final thoughts here. When the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there was not wearing the wedding clothes. And he asked, how did you get in here without the wedding clothes, friend? And the man was speechless. <clears throat> the man was speechless. <clears throat> and then the king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth for many are invited or called, but few are chosen. In this final moment here, these people come, but the, the master looks over the room and he says, this person here doesn't belong. Why does he have the right to say that? It's his banquet. <laughs> this person here says, well, I'll, I'll, I will enter this situation on whatever terms I decide. And I will make my uh, appearance here in whatever way I feel best. And the master says, no, it's not acceptable. <clears throat> I love the idea here of the clothes. <laughs> I really do. I think it's fascinating. The book of Revelation makes a huge uh, issue of this. The, the, the garments that the saved are wearing and the manner of them and the nature of them and the presentation of them. And we know in the mind of God that these are huge issues. He even makes, you know, back in the little Levitical priesthood, very specific guidelines for what they were supposed to wear and how they were supposed to present themselves and how this was all supposed to be visually <clears throat> understood. 
And I often think, as the Bible makes such a big deal out of this, that we often can look at our own selves and our own lives and our own presentation, our own understanding of what we are saying <laughs> by what we are and recognize that there's a certain requirement here. <clears throat> there's a certain requirement here. Uh, I, I, I don't think it would be out of line to bring up the issue of baptism at all here. You know, how do we clothe ourselves with Christ? How do we put on Christ? <laughs> how do we uh, go through this process of presenting our lives clean and undefiled? And uh, as they need to be before God, well, we have to be obedient to the gospel. We have to be obedient to who he is. We have to be obedient to what he's asked us to do. We have to recognize those things. <clears throat> and then we have to understand what this represents. What the master here in this parable is saying is not anything is going to be acceptable. <laughs> in fact, I think as we look at the rest of the scriptures, we see that there's actually some dramatic elements to this and very, very specific and very important elements to this that are critical to this process. As we look at this idea of this marriage as an enduring legacy, you know, we, we, we look back at the beginning of the Bible and we see what the Lord said there and all that happened. Now we look at the end of the scriptures and we see all that is going to happen. <laughs> and we see Jesus in his ministry not taking away from the idea of marriage, but enhancing it. You know, we, we live in a world today where it says over and over and over, what's marriage? And in the, in the, in the gospel, we say it's everything. <laughs> it's everything. It's so critical. It's so important. It's such a huge aspect of understanding everything that God wants us to recognize. And God wants our lives to uh, uh, be defined by in so many ways. <clears throat> and, and let me share this last final point with you. We, we live in a world, again, that has so many ideas. How do we forge a way through that? All that noise that we deal with every day. <laughs> How, how do we forge a way through through all the different things that people say about this and people say about that and people say about all these things? How do we guide our way through this and maintain the proper recognition and the proper understanding of these issues? I would submit to you that you need to spend more time in your Bible than you do on your phone. <laughs> it will direct you. It will help you see clearly God's point of view, and then it will diminish in perspective the world's point of view, which ultimately will be grandly and remarkably diminished. <laughs> what will be standing at the end of all these things will be the word of God, the will of God, the work of God, the wonders of God, and all the things that God has given us will be still standing, and it is indeed an enduring legacy. No matter what our world might submit or suggest. And it is so important to keep seeing that. We can be so easily inundated, <laughs> I would call it even buried, with the amount of information that our world tries to pour on us. <clears throat> and the way to dig our way out of that is by putting the word of God before us and to continue to recognize what it says. Jesus would say, haven't you read? when they challenged him about this very issue. <laughs> haven't you read, haven't we read lately <clears throat> what these issues represent and what they mean and what they are? Because if we have, we will know. And we will be able to articulate to the people around us the true nature of what this actually is and what it's supposed to be and how blessing, how big of a blessing it actually is <laughs> and how big of a wonder that it truly is and how much God has really done through all these things. So tonight, as we finish this thought here and as we bring these things to a close, if there's any way that we can help you, if there's any way we can pray with you, if there's any way that we can support you, we'd invite you to come as we stand and as we sing this final song. <clears throat>